Hi, this is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry. Join me now in the study of God's Holy Word. I would like to start this teaching with a quote from the Expositor's Bible Commentary. This is what they said. If Christians do not keep moving forward, they will regress or fall back. Let me read that again. If Christians do not keep moving forward, they will regress or fall back. Now consider this statement. Life is never static. Are you aware of this? Do you believe it? In other words, you're not standing still. You are either going forward or backward. So you must go forward or you will go backward. As a Christian, let me ask you, are you continuing to move forward spiritually speaking? Or are you regressing or falling back into the world and some old sin patterns? In this video, we are continuing our uh, theme for walking in truth ministry for the year 2022 and that theme is do what it says and it's based on James 1 where the apostle James instructs us by saying but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves in this particular video, we're going to examine the command as given in 2 Peter 3, 18. This is what it says. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now the command that we will study today, as I said, it's found in 2 Peter 3.18. And we will just deal with the first part, which uh, says, but grow in grace. Our command today will be grow in grace. Now these are three most powerful words given by the Apostle Peter. Herein is a command that has serious consequences if it's not obeyed. Now, before delving into the study, allow me to share three quotes with you. First of all, from Adam Clark. This is what he said. Those who content themselves with the grace they received when converted to God are at best in a continual state of infancy. So I want to ask you, how much grace did you receive when you were converted to God, when you were saved, when you were born again? And how much grace do you have now? Have you grown in grace? Or are you still in a state of infancy? Then Barnes Note said, no one becomes eminently pious any more than one becomes eminently learned or rich who does not intend it. And ordinarily men in religion are what they design to be. They have as much religion as they wish and possess about the character which they intend to possess. The key word in this quote is intent. But let me just qualify here. When these writers mention religion, they are actually referring to Christianity and talking about your relationship with the Lord, your walk with God. So when they say men in religion, they're talking about those who are walking with God. Okay, so... What this quote is telling us is that you have as much as you intend to have. Now, this is in life. You have as much as you intend to have. People who are educated, intended to become educated. 
and people who are eminently rich, for the most part, if they didn't inherit it or uh, steal it or cheat in order to get it, but if they were honest in uh, working themselves up to a place, they intended to do so. So it is with men who reach extraordinary elevations in Christianity. They gained what they meant to gain. And the worldly professors of Christianity have little comfort and peace. They have, in fact, the characters which they design to have. So if you are a worldly professor of Christianity and you have little peace in your life, little comfort, well, you have what you design to have. The biblical illustrator said, no one grows who does not mean to grow. Then uh, lastly, the preacher's homiletic commentary said this, if we would grow thus in grace, it must be the supreme idea of our lives to do it. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. There are such people in the church as minimum Christians. Here is the main secret of much of our puny and miserable spiritual growth. We are not and hardly want to be maximum Christians. Unless it be our idea to be such, we can never be such. So let me ask you, are you a minimum Christian or a maximum Christian? Well, it all depends on whether or not your growth in grace is the supreme idea of your life. If you have experienced puny and miserable spiritual growth, it's because you are, or you hardly want to be a maximum Christian. Unless it's your idea to be such, you can never be such. Hopefully and prayerfully, this teaching will help to change your idea. Okay, so going to uh, into our verse in 2 Peter 3, 18. But grow in grace. But grow in grace. This is our command, but Peter starts off by saying, but grow in grace. Now, in the beginning of 2 Peter, this epistle, he, uh, the Apostle Peter, he exhorts us to add one grace to another. We find this in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7, where he says, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. But then he comes to the third chapter, the very last verse in this chapter, and actually the end of the, book, uh, the epistle. Here he advises you to grow in all grace, not just add one grace to another, but now he's saying grow in all grace. And what he meant by that is increase in your likeness to Jesus, increase in a spirit of conformity to the will of God, where you govern your conduct more and more by the same principles that God does or you increase in that which constitutes true Christianity, which is often represented as grace, because every part is the result of grace. But grow in grace. Well, what does this look like? What does it look like when someone's growing in grace? Okay, well, in order to understand that, we're going to look at faith. Faith is the root grace, for by grace you are saved through faith. It's called the root grace. So we're going to look at what it, uh, what it looks like when you grow in faith. Well, first of all, you believe the promises more firmly than you have done. 
You let faith increase in extent where you believe more truth. You let faith increase in firmness where you get a tighter grip of every truth. You let faith increase in constancy where you're not feeble or wavering and you're not tossed about with every wind of doctrine. And you let faith increase in simplicity where you're resting more fully and more completely upon the finished work of Jesus on the cross. But grow in grace. Now in my studies, uh, I found in the Biblical Illustrator, they had a list of uh, the evidence of growth and grace, and I copied down some. I want to share them with you because it gives you the idea of what it looks like when you're growing in grace. Okay, the evidence. Uh, what kind of evidence do you look for? Well, first of all, there will be a more singleness of heart a soul devotion to Jesus. You won't be double-minded where you're trying to serve the world and serve Jesus at the same time. Another evidence is that you will be more and more actuated by principle and less and less by emotion or feeling. You won't be doing things, well, I feel like doing this today or I feel good about that. No, you will be uh, controlled or actuated by the fact that it's the right thing to do. I am doing this because it's right, whether I feel like it or not. You also, an evidence of growing in grace is that you will have more love to God and more love to mankind. This is a good one, very important. You will have an increased abhorrence of sin. So the evidence of growing in grace, you will have an increased abhorrence of sin. You will feel day by day less and less disposed to compromise with any sin, whether it be in yourself or in others. Another one is that there will be less relish for the world, less desire for its wealth, honors, or pleasures. This is a good one. The evidence of growing in grace, you will find it more and more easy to exercise a forgiving spirit and to pray for your enemies. Very important. Another evidence is having less and less anxiety about earthly things. We need that today. And another one, you are raised more and more above the world regarding less and less the good or ill opinions of men. You get to the place where it doesn't matter whether men like you or dislike you, you just obey God. This is an evidence of growing in grace. And lastly, you feel more and more self-abasement where self is out of the picture, self is not controlling, uh, Jesus must increase and you must decrease. Okay, growing in grace. Now there are besetting sins that we have to watch out for that could hinder your growth in grace. Here are some of them. One is levity or foolishness or this lightness of mind, character, or behavior, where you don't take things seriously. You have to be sober. Great, this is very important, growing in grace. Everything's not a joke. Okay, another uh, sin to watch out for is censoriousness, where you're severely critical and uh, fault-finding. Other sins are anger, pride, selfishness, sloth, envy, ambition. Now there's nothing wrong with wanting to excel in what you're doing, but this is talking about where you want to beat others so yourself can be exalted above others. That's what it's talking about here by ambition. And lastly, a sin, a besetting sin to watch out for is impure thoughts, for they will 
uh, hinder your growth and grace. Now we need to stop right here and consider how important is it that you grow in grace? What difference does it make if you are a minimum Christian or a maximum Christian? After all, you say, well, at least I'm a Christian. Well, Matthew Henry answers that question for you. This is what he said. By how much the stronger grace is in us, by so much the more steadfast shall we be in the truth. By how much the stronger grace is in us, by so much the more steadfast shall we be in the truth. And we see that in 2 Peter 3.18. You notice that Peter said, but grow in grace. Well, why did he put that word but there? Well, when you read verse 17, you find out why. And this is what 17 says. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, Beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. So we see here that growing in grace will stop you from falling into wickedness. And growing in grace is necessary for your steadfastness or your stability in your walk with God. Growing in grace will keep you from being seduced by profane men. And we find this. Peter's warning us. He said, beware. And there are two very alarming clauses here. He says, being uh, beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked. Led away, carried away, led away from the truth that was delivered by the apostles and prophets. He's warning of you being in great danger of being seduced or turned away from the truth. And he mentions throughout Second Peter, he mentions that false teachers will arise. They will lead you astray or attempt to lead you astray. There are mockers and scoffers in the last days, unlearned, unstable men who are twisting the scripture, who will deprave you, heretics, deceivers, scoffers. And he, he warns of the peril of error. And he mentions being led away with the error of the wicked. Those wicked are referred to as being lawless. And we see a lot of lawlessness in our world today, even in it's trying to creep into churches today. Lawless men who attempt by error to shift you off from your spiritual foundation these lawless men, they twist the scripture to make them countenance their lusts, exorbitant exactions, and lawless practices. In other words, they twist the scriptures to make excuses for their sin. These are wicked people. They're lawless. They're men without law. They're, they keep to no rules. They set no bounds to themselves. They're free thinkers. And Peter warns us, being led away with the error of the wicked, what will happen to you if that happens? You will fall from your own steadfastness. You'll fall from your firm adherence to the truth. You'll fall from firm and settled principles of truth into error. Because you see, that's why he said, but grow in grace. Because grace is the true source of of steadfastness and stability. You won't fall from steadfastness if you are growing in grace, in other words. The Believer's Bible Commentary said this, believers must be constantly on guard against the peril of error. 
the knowledge that there will always be false teachers who corrupt and imitate the truth should keep us alert. It's easy for the unsuspecting to be swept off their feet by the error of the wicked and to lose their spiritual balance. Then Matthew Henry said, We are in great danger of being seduced and turned away from the truth. So I ask you, do you now understand how important it is that you are a doer of the word and not a hearer only and that you grow in grace? And do you now see the danger of settling to be a minimum Christian rather than a maximum Christian. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you now for the power of your Holy Spirit to rest upon us. We ask you, O oh Father, that you would, by your Spirit, reveal to us any complacency, any passivity, any indifference, any lukewarmness that would cause us to settle for being minimum Christians in a time when we are surrounded with lawlessness, with wicked men, false teachers who would uh, attempt to, to draw us, lead us, carry us away from the truth. We ask you that you would reveal to us any sins that would hinder us from growing in grace. And we ask you for your grace to enable us to indeed grow in grace and be maximum Christians so that we will make it to the end and we will finish strong. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, amen.